Clayton, we're back. We're back, we're back, we're back. This video is about, this is just my opinion also, but I deal with this every day. Uh, the top five things not to skimp on when you're building a big turbo project. doesn't have to be Volkswagen related. Obviously this channel is primarily Volkswagen and Audi stuff, uh, but we're gonna go over the top five things that I see people cheap out on that causes the most aggravation and headaches and potential long-term problems. Um, we have a Mark IV on the dyno, or it's been on the dyno. It has a main seal problem, so we now have to pull the clutch or pull the transmission to fix that. And we have some other cool stuff that we're not going to talk about now, but you'll see some content on that. But let's get into my top five things that you shouldn't skimp on. It's going to so, be, be a lot of me just rambling. So talk about five things. What are they, Dave? Start with, this number, isn't, start with number one, well, not number two. No, 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 no. So this is what I'll say. We're going we're gonna to count down to number one. However, the first four, they can fit anywhere. Number one, though, is, is number one. You mix that up. The last four. The first one's the real important Well, we're not one. talking about number one first. Oh. You know what I mean? The number one thing not to do or whatever. You know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah, we're yeah. not going yeah, to... Yeah, people watch would watch two seconds of it and they're done. <laughs> watch till the end. Come on. Like, so subscribe. the first four... Yeah, like, subscribe. Thanks. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> the first four things, they don't really fit any which way. The last one is kind of the most important thing for me. But we'll start off with number five. Pretty cheap one. Well, these ones from Mark 7s aren't They're that cheap. cheap. They, these ones aren't that cheap. But in the scheme of things, spark plugs. Ensure you're putting a proper heat range plug for your application, the horsepower and fuel that you're using. There's lots of information out there on the internet. However, engines, guys come in with big turbo setups or whatever, and they're running the, the wrong spark plugs or they're having coil or ignition issues. I shouldn't say coil, ignition issues. And a lot of times, they're running the wrong spark plugs. So make sure for whatever your horsepower goals are that you have a proper heat range plug to match those goals. If you notice in the last clip, Clayton forced me to fix that box. Yeah, he, who has the ADHD, me or you? Should be put away. The next one is a huge one, injectors. The amount of times that people skimp on Amazon injectors. Amazon and it just causes you endless grief. You have no injector data for them. It makes it really hard for a tuner to, it just adds additional time. And a lot of those cheaper injectors are literally that. They're cheap and junk and they can, if an injector fails, it can easily take out your engine. So why skimp on it? They're not that crazy expensive from cheap ones to good ones. So it doesn't really make sense to skimp on them. The other thing, and I've mentioned in previous videos before, the size of the injector and cost, there isn't much of a difference between say 500 cc's and 1000 cc injectors or 1000 cc. Once you get into like 2000 cc injectors, sometimes the cost goes up a little bit, but it's only like 15% or something like that, that they're more. So oversize your fueling system. Don't buy junky injectors. Next, number three, Clayton. Did you see it yet? No, not yet. Wastegates. Junky wastegates, man. They're talking about something that has, for one, it's, it's part of your boost control. So if you are having fighting boost control issues, boost spiking or not enough boost or whatever, if this thing's leaking, it can cause you endless grief. If it sticks, it can ruin your engine. Don't buy put it, <laughs> just buy a good wastegate. There's things like a blow-off valve, for example, like you don't technically even need to run a blow-off valve. The turbo, 
depending on how far you're spinning it and stuff like that, it can see repercussions by not running a blow off valve, but it's not typically going to take out your engine or anything like that. A crappy wastegate with a crappy valve can easily take out your engine. So again, buy a good one like that. Buy a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Number four, fuel pumps. These aren't, these aren't expensive either. <laughs> like when you're talking about doing a big turbo application, there's a lot of expense that goes into this stuff and a lot of time, all the fabrication, especially if you're doing a custom setup, like on a 2.5 or a VR or something like that, it can get very costly and I get you're trying to save some money. However, having something like a fuel pump that you may have paid $80 for instead of maybe paying $150 for, I get that's twice as much money, but it's still only $150 upon the thousands that you're spending building the turbo kit. And you're good at math. I like that. I'm, I am good math. quick on good the math. spot, quick buddy. I'm quick on the spot. So like this is a Walboro 525 pump in this. I can't remember the cost of them, but they're not expensive and they make really, really good horsepower. I have this same one in my daily, which did 510 wheel horsepower on pump gas. It's cheap insurance to have a good pump that can flow lots. Again, overbuild the fuel system. The price difference between some of these pumps isn't that big. So there's no point in skimping on something that could again, easily take out the whole setup, the engine, everything because it's trash. And buy them for the fuel you're running too. If you're running ethanol, don't cheap out on a non-ethanol pump. Yeah, so. I've done, I've done that. Yeah, so the fueling stuff over the years, the amount of fueling upgrades, fuel pumps, injectors, and stuff like that, that I've had to buy just from my own cars, um, upgrading, just overfuel the setup. And then if you do plan on, like Clayton said, running ethanol, for example, there are ethanol compatible pumps, but the big one really um, is the size of it because when you go to ethanol you're basically shrinking your fuel system by like 35 to 40 percent so you want to make sure you have adequate fuel especially for the fuel you're running so we're getting down to number one i do have a bonus one Ooh. but the number one thing that you should not skimp out on let's get to it the suspense is killing Cl me. clayton what said is this number is one. so youtubey but it's really good information for you guys that are starting out building these projects thinking about the things that you can penny pinch on, you know, yeah, if you go with a cheaper intercooler, it may not be as good, it's not gonna be as efficient, it's not gonna make as much horsepower, but it also is very unlikely to take out your engine. The last, well not, I do have a bonus one, but this is the most important thing. Number one. Number one, put a big one on the screen, Clayton. Tuning. The amount of people that do all, now I just have an ECU here, um, this isn't the tune itself. It's not? No, when it's people not. people buy a tune, they don't get an ECU? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes they do. But the point of this, I mean, this is just an ECU, but I'm talking about the tune specifically. I've seen so many people over the years of doing this that spend crazy amounts of money on their engine setup and their turbo setup, all to destroy it because they've cheaped out on tuning it. And it's insane to think about. So many people get to that point and they just don't want to pay the money. And it can really bite you in the butt because you have all this invested into a turbo kit, potentially a, f a built engine, all that stuff. And you have some guy potentially on the internet that has posted on Facebook groups saying he can tune your car and you don't know anything about it or you just decide to try to do it yourself and cause you endless grief. That doesn't mean you can't tune your own vehicle, but there is a time and a place when you should invest in a proper tune, whether it's a standalone tuner like myself or a reflash tuner. Well, I do reflash tuning, but I don't <laughs> like myself. <laughs> well, I meant like EQT or Tunezilla yep. or something like that. That's what I'm referring to. We, the job of a tuner is to keep the thing together and to monitor. And if you're not familiar with all the things related to keeping an NG, engine happy, NG? an engine happy, you're really gonna be in for a bad time. Man, it's just pluses and minuses, it's easy. It is it's just easy. pluses and minuses, yeah, it's just easy. The amount of hours I spend trying to get the dumbest little thing fixed and working on a car. Like idling. Idling, <laughs> like some of that stuff is 
With reflash tuning, it's very easy because the OEM has already done it all, which makes some of the reflash tuners look really good because none of that really gets touched. They're really focusing on timing and higher boost levels and higher load levels. But the stuff that's really hard is idle, drivability, out of boost, under, you know, anyways. I just want to, number one thing not to skimp on is software, tune, ECU, whatever it is, the end package that's going to tune and make your engine run efficiently and at maximum horsepower, if that's what you're chasing. We have one bonus, though. Do you agree with my tuning thing with all the things you've seen around over the years? Yes, and of course, of course. You're not getting anywhere with a cruddy tune, and more importantly, you could wreck a lot of stuff. I've, a lot of stuff. I've had friends and acquaintances over the years that have... Your friends? Not many anymore. <laughs> um, I work too much. I work too much. That have just invested so much time and money into a engine setup and turbo setup and just take out the engine because of a crappy tune. So it's unfortunate, but it does happen. Don't skimp on the tune. The bonus thing's coming up. Yeah. Last thing, Clayton. Most of the stuff I talked about all are kind of can be detrimental to your engine really, which is going to cost you endless, endless. It, in some cases, it's going to ruin your project and you're just going to sell it because something happened to it and you can't recover from the problems that it's incurred. I am never going to financially recover from this. Because you skimped on injectors or fuel pump or what else did I mention? Spark plugs, tune, watch wastegate, the watch the video. Project. It's all in there. But the last thing is the turbocharger. Now this typically, from my experience, it can happen for sure, but typically the turbocharger isn't going to take out your engine if it fails. It definitely can for sure, but in most cases, a lot of stuff gets caught in the intercooler if it goes to the intake side or it goes out the exhaust. It doesn't, in a lot of cases, hurt the engine. Stuff can go, people are gonna call me out on this. It definitely can happen, I shouldn't say that, but. It's very uncommon when a cheaper turbo fails that it's gonna hurt the engine. Usually what happens, it starts puking oil, then you gotta pull it off. So the turbo thing. It's more just a waste. Like it's more waste, of a, it's waste a headache. Waste your time on a used turbo that you have no like, idea what it's Go about. film this, Clayton. This, this 180, for example, the turbocharger here is on the top. It's not too bad to get to. It's not too bad to get to. But on some of these cars, the, the turbo is very, very hard to get to. So when it starts puking oil, or the wheel starts touching down on the compressor housing or whatever, it's a huge expense and a pain in the butt to swap out. So although cheaper turbos we've talked about in the past can make horsepower, they generally don't do it for very long. I think, oh yeah, we had the VR turbo, one of the videos we did recently on Mark III that had a junky turbo on it. And you, you've seen it just by putting a better turbo on it, not even the best turbo, just a better turbo on it, it gained like 50 wheel horsepower or something at the same boost level. Not to mention the other turbo was smoking, all that sort of stuff. So the last one on the list, turbocharger. If I had to pick, again, it would be outside of the top five that I had chosen. Those other five things are way more important. The turbocharger part of it just helps you make power a little bit easier and causes you less grief long term. Is there anything, Clayton, that you want to add that you're thinking about? And I'm not talking, I asked you a question, I immediately start talking again. Yeah, that's I'm great. gonna try again. Okay. This was specific about a, like a big turbo build. I'm not talking about an engine build or anything like that, anything internal. We're talking about turbo kits, building a turbo kit for your setup. So back to what I had asked, Clayton. Just do your research and listen to people that have good advice. It's everybody always thinks, oh, well, okay, that's great, that advice, but I'm gonna do it this way because it's a little bit cheaper, I can save some money, or mm. I'm gonna do it this way for now and then upgrade later. Mm. Just do it, try to do it as right as you can starting off. I understand plans change and, and I've Budget been down that is an important route. thing. I've been down that route, so I get it, but. Whoa, oh. broken stuff. The, um, the, the one thing while you were just saying that, I'm going to say, don't be an asshole. An asshole. And what that means is you just ask all these questions 
from somebody knowledgeable, it doesn't need to be me, somebody in that trade, whatever, and you don't take any of their advice and you just do your own thing, you'll pay in the long term. Don't be an asshole. Asshole, right? Yep. A-S-K. Asshole, yep. Asshole. So that's it. Top five things. We're going to wrap up the video, but we'll talk about a couple of things that we have on deck. We do, I have started the tuning process on this. Stroker 1AT uh, on ECU Master. We have a 7.5 GTI. It's a 2021. That's in, that just got a turbo setup. Looks good. Clutch, fuel pump, a whole bunch of stuff. We're probably going to do some content on that. I think we're doing EQT software on that one. Um, and we'll have the, hopefully in the next week or so, we'll probably be into the all wheel drive swapped two liter turbo, big turbo, the one that's been on the channel forever. That one's on Cyvex and I'm having somebody else tune it. Again, this is sort of the thing. There's so much time and money invested into that car. That ECU I'm not familiar with. So I'm just outsourcing that work to somebody else. We're gonna do it on the dyno here. We've already had it on the dyno, but we've had some issues with it. So that one's coming up very soon as well. I appreciate everybody's support. Clayton, do you have anything else to add? No, he's staring off into space. He's already he sleeping. Early. He cut me off. So no, me he's off. sleeping. No, he's already now. sleeping behind no, the fighting. camera. We're fighting. Uh, thanks for all the support. And um, I don't know what else to say. Thanks, bye. Like and subscribe. <laughs> That's what I was supposed to say. Like and subscribe. It's been so long since I've done this. Bye.